Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, the it, as you say, it's it's at best a modest uh, uh, bounce. Uh, bounce is probably an exaggerated word for what this is. Um, it's a little blip, maybe. Um, and 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 what we're seeing is, first of all, with so many uh, people having made up their minds with such a polarized environment that we find ourselves in. I mean, and and so few persuadable voters out there that uh, that's not surprising. There's not going to be a massive uh, change in, in the narrative of this of this contest. I mean, you know, uh, President Trump still remains in the in the low 40s at best. Um, Biden is in the mid to upper 40s to even low 50s, depending on different polls. Uh, most of them have it, you know high single digit uh, advantage for him uh, nationally, which is probably enough to offset uh, at this point, the kind of electoral college uh, differences that one might get from the national picture to the state by state, to, you know, two or three points being the estimate roughly as to what he needs to have uh, minimally as an advantage. So right now, the conventions have come, they've gone, they were certainly very <laughs> different than anything we've ever seen uh, but I don't think it really changed the narrative all that much of the campaign. The story I think of this election is how remarkably steady the polls have been for a very, very long time for exactly the reasons that Lee mentioned. We have a deeply polarized electorate and we have very few people at this point who haven't made up their minds. Um, that's a consistent finding across all of the polls and I think that explains why the numbers just aren't moving very much. I think you know, that, you know, that comes down to the old adage I guess all adages are old adages, but to, to the adage that, you know, in a close election, the deciding group is almost everyone. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, who makes the difference? Well, they can just get, as you say, a chip, you know, just chip away at some uh, conservative Hispanic voters, uh, so, some uh, young male African-American voters. Um, you know, that, that would make a, you know, a significant difference. But again, we always have to look at in where, what states and, and places like New York and, and California, uh, this discussion is very different. Those, you know, those are uh, states that are baked in. So you have to look at the places that are the so-called at best dozen battleground states. And so, you know, what, what does this mean for Florida? What does this mean for Pennsylvania? What does it mean for Wisconsin, Michigan and, and the like? Uh, maybe for Arizona. Um, those are the places that this matters. And, and to be able to, uh, you know, bring out uh, some African-American athletes and the like at the Republican convention, uh, you know, Herschel Walker and others, um, you know, clearly a statement um, that they're trying to, you know, just get a little wrinkle, uh, a crease in, in that support again, in such a close, you know, what is in a sense a close race despite Biden's lead. I mean, I, I'm not of the school that says this thing is, you know, pretty much over because the lead is unprecedented at this point and, you know, that, you know, no one's ever come back this far this late and all that. I don't buy into that. I think that this is very much, uh, you know, up in the air. I think uh, there's enough voters um, and enough in, in the turnout area, as you say, that this could still given the oddities of the Electoral College versus the popular vote. Um, the lead that Biden has is there, but it's not necessarily, uh, you know, safe lead at this point. I agree with what Lee has said completely. I think there still is, a, first of all, a long way to go before Election Day and, and things could happen. But there are some cross currents in the data. I noted with interest that Stan Greenberg, one of the Democratic pollsters last week, said that Trump had a solid um, it was in the solid, probably low double digits among African Americans. Um, perhaps that was a, a reflection from that one very impressive night at the convention mm -hmm. with all of the black elected officials and, and um, sports stars and the like. Um, you just need to make a dent in some of those small swaths of the electorates, whether it's Hispanic voters or African American voters, but of course the cross cutting currents here are what's going on with race relations and Black Lives Matter. And so it's hard to know whether, if in fact there was a bump among uh, black men, again, a particularly weak group for Hillary Clinton, um, if there was a slight bump, uh, we'll have to see how long it lasts. 